Hello, in this presentation, we will be recording business transactions related to accounts payable or the purchases cycle, recording these transactions with debits and credits. At the end of this, we will be able to list transactions involving accounts payable, record transactions involving accounts payable using debits and credits, and explain the effect of transactions on assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, expenses, and net income. We're going to be recording these transactions up here in the left hand side in accordance with our thought process. We will then be posting these not to the general ledger but to a worksheet format so that we can see a quick calculation as to what is the impact or effect on the individual accounts as well as the effect on the account groups as a whole. Remember that all the groups for the accounts will always be listed in order when you're looking at a trial balance, which is why I recommend looking at a trial balance whenever working through problems such as these. For example, we have the assets in green here. We have the liabilities in orange. We have the equity in light blue and then the dark blue revenue and expense accounts, those being the income statement accounts. These will be our beginning balances. Note that over here, when we record the journal entries, we are going to have debits and credits in separate columns and represent the credits with the brackets. Over here on the trial balance, however, we're going to combine the debits and credits into one column and represent the credits with brackets. And note that the debits are the same as credits by a subtraction problem of debits minus credits being zero. The reason for that is that it's really going to simplify the process it's really useful to know when working with Excel, it will help simplify the process and help to simplify formulas and therefore uh, it's worth it's worth using. And so th that's why we will use it. So we can see that we have cash here at 50,000. We've got the, that's the debit. Then we got the owner capital at 40,000 and we're starting out with revenue at 10,000. We are then going to record this first transaction saying, Purchased supplies on account for 450. First question, is cash affected? And we're going to say no, because the purchase happened on account. Therefore, cash is not happening. We know that on account is going to mean typically either accounts receivable or accounts payable. In the context of purchasing, we mean accounts payable. So we might think that we should start with accounts payable, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say that we should start with what we receive first reason being is because it can be more easier to know whether to increase or decrease what we have received because we received it therefore it will be increasing and what the debit and credit will be related to it so although we know we're probably know at this point and we do know at this point we're going to be dealing with accounts payable let's think about what we got in this case we got supplies supplies if we look at our trial balance is right here it's in the asset section therefore it is an asset and we know that we got more of it, so it needs to go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as its normal balance. Like all the assets here, the normal balance will be a debit. And therefore, to increase it, the same thing would be another debit. So we can increase the supplies. And if we do that, then we know that the other account must be credited. And we know that other account is not decreased to cash. We didn't pay cash. If we had, the credit would go to cash and decrease the asset. But instead we bought it on account here supplies going up by the way <laughs> supplies increasing from zero uh by 450 to 450 and then the other accounts being accounts payable so we're increasing the liability we're increasing the bad thing now we already knew we were going to credit the liability the credit accounts payable because we debited supplies that's why we worked it in this format but we wanted to just analyze that and double check that for ourselves we know that the accounts payable is a credit balance account, it being a liability account. The bad thing is going up in that we owe more money. We bought something on account, kind of like a credit card bill, in that we owe money for the purchase that we have. And that credit card tab then increases with a credit. Liabilities having a credit balance, the same thing to it will increase it. That then being another credit the liabilities going up from zero by 450 in the credit direction to a credit balance of 450. Effect on the accounting equation would be assets are increasing because supplies are going up, liabilities also increasing, 
because the accounts payable is going up. And equity, no impact, nothing in either the capital account is happening here or the income statement accounts of revenue and expenses. Therefore, the net income as well is staying the same in that we had revenue uh, before of 10,000 minus expenses of zero, giving us a net income calculated as revenue minus expenses of 10,000. Remember that this 10,000 here is a net income revenue of credits beating the debits of expenses this is not a loss or a negative uh, number represents credits for us when we are considering the trial balance and of course no activity happened and we are remaining at the 10,000 net income revenue minus expenses next transaction paid cash for supplies purchased on account 450. first question is cash affected we're going to say, yes, cash is affected here. Key term, paid. And that, of course, means cash is going down. So we're going to decrease cash. Cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it as its normal balance, which in this case would be a credit. We're going to put the credits on the bottom because credits typically go on the bottom. Let's clean up a couple terms that may be confusing when considering a book problem such as this. Note that we have paid here and we also have another key term on account. That may confuse us when we are first wor working with these types of transactions because in the prior transaction we said on account means that accounts payable or accounts receivable will be impacted, in this case accounts payable, and therefore we might think well then cash shouldn't be affected because uh, we're dealing with an on account transaction, something dealing with accounts payable. Note however that when we are purchasing something that would be correct if we purchased something on account we didn't pay cash but paid on account paid with something like a credit card paid on a tab however the second transaction will be us paying off the tab and therefore we're going to have to pay off the tab with cash so that means that we're going to have both an on account and paid in the wording in real life, of course, we would have an idea of what we are doing. We'd be writing a check to possibly the credit card company or some vendor, and it would be very clear that we are decreasing cash with a check and uh, writing that to a vendor to reduce the amount that we owe to those individuals, the IOU being the accounts payable account. In a book problem, it's going to be very generic, and we're just going to have to know what those terminology terms mean Obviously paid means we paid with cash. Note that if it said paid for supplies and it eliminated the cash altogether, paid means paid with cash. In real life, clearly we'd be paying with a check, but uh, that means cash for a book problem. On account, might it might also say on credit. Many books will not include the term on credit because they're trying to separate the concept of credit from what is meant when we are debiting and crediting in terms of journal entries from other contexts such as a tab increasing and decreasing which could imply slightly different things but note if you see on credit you're going to have to distinguish that from something like running a tab up or paying a tab off as opposed to debiting and crediting in terms of a normal uh, journal entry type process also note, when we thought about cash first, we're going to credit cash because we're decreasing cash and therefore we are putting it on the bottom. We have to put the credits on the bottom, remember? We are not going to start uh, by, by forcing ourselves to do the debit first just because the debit goes on top and then format the journal entry from left to right. We are going to think about the journal entry in a format that makes the most sense, in a format that is easiest for us to construct and it is easiest for us to construct cash first, so we will put that on the bottom. Remember that it's just really a convention to put the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. However, it's a convention we want to follow as much as possible. Book problems will of course mark you off if you do not. In, tr in real life, there are situations when we would deviate from that convention. For example, if we're, if we're auditing and we're performing longer, com more complicated journal entries, we may and we do want to make the journal entry not in a format that applies to a, just a convention like this or to some kind of computer programming type convention but in a format that someone human can go back and read and try to interpret as best they can so whatever the best way to uh, to format a journal entry 
in that context, uh, that's what we would use. But we're going to follow this convention and we're going to put the credit on the bottom. But still think about cash first. Then we just need to know that what we're going to debit here. And of course, we are going to debit. By the way, cash is going down from the 50,000 minus the 450 debit minus the credit 249,550. The debit being, as we stated, the other account of accounts payable. We know that we are going to debit accounts payable because we credited cash. That's why we're going to credit cash first. However, we do want to double check ourselves. Remember that the accounts payable represents money that is owed uh, from the company to a vendor and their and it liabilities have credit balances. We paid off the vendor and therefore this liability needs to go down. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it as its normal balance, which in this case is a debit. So that'll kind of double check ourselves. Here's the credit. There's the debit. It's going to bring the balance back down to zero. Remember that in, in many book problems, they're not going to give us this journal entry in sequence after the prior journal entry. This one obviously follows the prior journal entry, meaning we bought supplies on account and now we're paying off on account. That will not be the case typically in a book problem. They're just going to give you this journal entry and they're going to say, hey, you're going to have to know that if you paid supplies on account, that implies that in the past, there must have been at some point in time a purchase of supplies on account and therefore there must be something owed in accounts payable. They may not even give you the trial balance or tell you that there's something in accounts payable and just give you this phrasing and we'd have to say, hmm, well, if that's the case, we must have bought something on account in the past and therefore have a balance in accounts payable showing that we owe something and need to decrease that amount after we then pay off the amount we owe. If we look at the accounting equation, the assets are going down with the cash decreasing. The liabilities too are going down with the accounts payable decreasing and the equity remains the same. Equity remaining the same would imply that net income too remains the same, meaning we had net income of 10,000 calculated as revenue minus expenses before the transaction. Nothing happened in this blue area neither of these two accounts being an expense or income account and therefore we end with net income at that same 10,000. Next transaction. Purchased auto service on account $320. So we're going to purchase auto service. First question is cash affected and the answer no because we purchased it on account. On account typically means either accounts receivable or accounts payable. When considering something purchased, it means accounts payable. So we know accounts payable will be one account, but once again, it would be a little more difficult to know whether accounts payable is increasing or decreasing and whether to debit or credit it. And it might be easier for us to consider what we received, in this case, that being auto service. Now, we're not talking auto the asset in this case. We're talking auto the expense because it's a, a service. So it's going to be auto expense down here. Expenses might be a little bit more strange for us to memorize which way they're going, but expenses are the most common type of accounts. So remember that all the expenses we will be working with, meaning there'll be more expenses than pretty much any other type of account. They all have debit balances and they all only go up. So whenever you see an expense, typically, uh, you're just going to debit it because it's a debit balance account. They only go up and therefore they will increase in the debit direction. So it's really good to get an idea of that, get a feel for that, get used to that being the case. After working with the cash transactions, uh, we may not, we may not, uh, we may have kind of skipped what the expenses are actually doing when we record them because we know that we have to debit them because we credited cash. But Get used to knowing what the expenses are doing. There's more expense accounts than any other type of account. They all basically do the same thing. They all go up and only up in the debit direction. Therefore, the auto expense will go up in the debit direction. If we increase the auto expense, we need to credit something. That's something not being cash in this case because we bought it on account and therefore did not pay cash. And we know that we bought on account and that means accounts payable. Auto expense going up 320 to 320. 
And then we've got the accounts payable at the credit of 320. Now we knew that the credit was gonna go to accounts payable because we debited the auto expense. Now let's think through it. Does it make sense that we are crediting accounts payable? Remember that accounts payable is a liability account. It is going up. The bad thing is increasing. The bill we owe to the accounts payable is increasing, kind of like our credit card bill going up, us having purchasing something on account. And therefore, we will do the same thing to it as its normal balance, which is a credit. Here's the increase from zero up in the credit direction by 320 to 320 credit. Impact on the accounting equation, assets remaining the same. The liabilities increasing. The equity decreasing. Why? Because net income is going down. Net income calculated as revenue minus expenses. Expenses increasing, bringing that equation, that net income down. Net income then will decrease total equity. As we just stated, net income is decreasing. And we see here we have the 10,000 credit before that calculated as revenue minus expenses. 10,000 credit revenue minus zero debit expenses. We then have a debit of 320, bringing that calculation to 9,680. 10,000 revenue minus 320 expenses, 9,680 credit balance winning. These brackets, remember, representing credit, not representing a negative number in this case. Next transaction, purchase meals and entertainment on account. First question, is cash affected? In this case, no, we purchased something, but we purchased it on account and not with cash. On account means either accounts receivable or accounts payable. In this case, because we are dealing with purchases, we mean accounts payable. Accounts payable is the account we will be using, but it might be difficult to know whether it goes up or down or to debit or credit. It might be easier to first consider what we have received, that being meals and entertainment and expense. And like all expenses, expenses have debit balances and they only go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as its normal balance, which in this case would be a debit. So we're going to debit the meals and entertainment as always, and as, meaning as always, the expenses always basically are debited. And once we know that we're going to do that, we know that we are going to credit the other account, that other account not being cash, not decreasing the cash because we didn't pay cash. We are increasing the liability instead that liability being accounts payable. We already know that we credit accounts payable because we debit the meals and entertainment expense, but we do want to double check that. And so let's do that now. Accounts payable has a credit balance. It needs to go up. The bad thing needs to go up. Our bills going up. Our credit card balance is going up or our accounts payable is going up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as its normal balance, which in this case is a credit. So if we post this out, then we have meals and entertainment increasing by 1,500 to 1,500 in the debit direction. We have accounts payable increasing from 320 by 1,500 in the credit direction to 1,820. Accounting equation, assets remain the same. Liabilities increasing due to accounts payable going up and the equity decreasing due to expenses going up meals and entertainment the specific expense and that brings down net income calculated as revenue minus expenses and net income going down means total equity is decreasing next transaction we're going to say that paid cash for auto service done on account in the past 320. first question is cash affected we're going to say yes keyword paid meaning cash is going down therefore cash has a debit balance how do we make it go down opposite thing to it which in this case is a credit so we would credit the cash remember that we have paid here and we also know have this on account so don't let the on account throw you off thinking that the paid doesn't still mean cash it does still mean cash cash is going down then we need to know what the debit will be after knowing we're going to credit cash also remember cash will go on the bottom because we are crediting it at this point 
and we will think of cash first because it's the easy account to think of rather than trying to think of the debit first just because it's on top. Then we need to think what the debit will be and in this case we purchased something, uh, paid for something, we had purchased auto expense that something that we had purchased on the, in the past on account. So remember on account means accounts receivable or accounts payable. In this case we're talking about purchasing so we're talking about accounts payable. So the debit's going to go to accounts payable. And so we already know that we're going to debit the accounts payable because we credited cash. That's why we start with cash, but let's think it through. Accounts payable has a credit balance. We paid it off. We paid off the amount that we owe and therefore that credit balance needs to decrease. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it as its normal balance. This being a normal credit balance, the opposite then a debit of 320. If we post this out then, we're going to say that the cash is decreasing from 49,550 minus the credit of 320 to 49,230. We know that the accounts payable then starting at a credit of 1,820 decreasing by 320 bringing that balance to 1,500. Effect on accounting equation is assets decreasing because cash went down liabilities decreasing because accounts payable went down and the equity remaining the same the effect on the net income none note that there's no imp neither of these accounts are revenue or expense accounts even though cash is going down no effect on net income and we have the net income calculation still at the 10,000 credit minus 1,500 meals and entertainment debit minus the auto expense debit for the credits winning revenue beating expenses credits beating debits on the income statement of 8180 that being the same in the beginning and ending of this transaction we are now able to list transactions involving accounts payable record transactions involving accounts payable using debits and credits Explain the effect of transactions on assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, expenses, and net income.